Welcome, dear listeners, to a chilling journey through the haunted corridors of one of America's most infamous and spine-tingling landmarks. In this episode, we'll dive deep into the dark history, eerie legends, and countless stories of paranormal activity that have made Waverly Hills Sanatorium a magnet for ghost hunters, thrill seekers, and those with a fascination for the disturbing. Located in Louisville, Kentucky, the sanatorium stands as a grim testament to a bygone era era of medical practices where the afflicted often found themselves in that place that was both a beacon of hope and a chamber of despair as we navigate uh, the shadows of the decaying be- of this decaying behemoth recounting the tales of restless spirits unexplained phenomenon and the souls that once suffered within these grim walls so dim your lights grab your headphones and prepare for this auditory descent into the heart of darkness exploring the waverly hill sanatorium is not for the faint of heart as we dare to peel back the layers of this haunt, uh, haunted institution and, and uncover the unsettling truths that lie hidden in its very essence i'm your host casey i am mike I'm uh, Joe. Sorry, <laughs> I spaced out there. I was like, "God damn, this motherfucker is getting better and better at intros." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to take some time out to uh, discuss. <laughs> Uh, something uh, of the weird patterns we've been having that me and Casey are talking about. We went from Nazis to tuberculosis. Because <laughs> <laughs> the last one, tuberculosis, this one, and then so is the next one. <laughs> the other one has like tuberculosis shit tied into it too, doesn't it? Yeah. What? Yeah. The Stanley Hotel, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, yeah, it, they, yeah. Yeah, they put... Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into it you'll see okay, yeah it, it's just it's funny though we just keep going in fucking patterns it's like it's unintentionally too. let me guess you guys are gonna talk about zombie nazis or nazi zombies uh no tuberculosis <laughs> then we'll get back to nazis in november <laughs> we probably we gotta, will we gotta take a little break from it <laughs> yeah stretch our legs outside of it for a little bit just kidding just kidding all right, so let's get into a little bit of background of the sanatorium itself. So the the land was originally purchased by Major Thomas H. Hayes in 1883 to make um, to make the Hayes family home. And due to the location, there was no nearby schools for his daughters to attend. So this motherfucker decided to open a local one room schoolhouse on Pages Lane. Hired a a lady named Lizzie Lee Harris to teach the the school, and it became known as the Waverly School. And uh, did you see the background of the name? Yeah, that's what I, I was gonna say. Well, that's oh. yeah, because uh, Major Hayes liked the name, so he just when he bought the land, he decided to name it Waverly Hill, and then. The board of the tuberculosis hospital kept the name when they bought the land and opened the sanatorium, and that is why it became the known as the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Yeah, that's what uh, he let her. He let her pick the the name, and he liked it. He named the whole property it for the school thing. I was watching a video, and he was saying um, the person was saying that it was the name of this book series that was like popular. So that's what it was named. And then he liked it so much, he named the whole property property that, because originally it was just a schoolhouse named the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was like. Well, he probably didn't know it was the book. He probably just, the teacher yeah, probably I, did, but. Yeah, the, t- the teacher named the schoolhouse that, and he liked it so much, he named the whole fucking thing that. I don't, I don't know if he knew that it was a book. And he was like, yeah, Waverly, that's cool. And then later, someone's like, hey, that's even cooler. And they made Wa- Wizards of Waverly Place. <laughs> <laughs> now, that'd be fun. Fun fact, was shot on question. that hill. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Selena Gomez was shot up with drugs on that hill. I'm just kidding. I don't know if she's ever had a drug addiction. but uh, She did it. have tuberculosis, and it was cured. <laughs> yeah, well, I believe it. You see her face? I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, that's a way you can tell. God <laughs> oh, damn. She's a fucking <laughs> leopard, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Anyways. But uh, the... Uh, team. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So when it originally opened, it opened in 1910 as a two-story hospital to accommodate 40 to 50 tuberculosis patients. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put a little spook in it, you know? No. Uh, I've said that word so many times today, I'm forgetting how you say it. Uh, or tuber- maybe I've always said it. Tuberculosis. <laughs> tuberculosis. <laughs> Tubercul- tuber- tuber- tuberculosis. Right. Tuberculosis. Take out some vowels this time. <laughs> <laughs> to Berg, this guy I was watching, it was what I was saying. It was like this redneck, like kind of sounding guy. He fucking was adding vowels in there that didn't belong to bark laosis or something weird. <laughs> like he was switching around letters. Hmm. It was, it was actually fun. To listen to. <laughs> but the way this uh, sanatorium is built, it was a self-sufficient community, it had its own zip code, post office, farmland, laundry facilities, maintenance garage, a butchery. And doctors and employees were unable to leave the grounds. Even their own whorehouse, but you weren't allowed to let the uh, the whores breathe on you. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely weren't masking up back then. I think that's when they first invented the N uh, nine N one seven. What are the masks called? Ninety five. <laughs> what was I say? N seven mar- fucking armor from Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were saying like a droid from Star Wars. I, I, don't know. I didn't know where you were going. Droid with the fucking the N7 armor from Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would just be like NC-17. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. But the reason why this was opened in Jefferson County is because of, they were ravaged with the outbreak of tuberculosis, also known as the White Plague. Didn't know that, even though we talked about tuberculosis in the last episode why, why was it called the white plague i don't i don't know i didn't i didn't get into it mm. but the reason why they were such a high white outbreak up yeah <laughs> i think it's white people be fucking up <laughs> <laughs> but i guess the outbreak was so high because the wetlands along the higher river was a perfect breeding ground for tuberculosis mm. i dig it but they try to contain the disease in a two-story wooden sanatorium, and it consists already. Oh yeah, no, it consisted of an administrative main building, two open-air pavilions, and each housing pavilions. T- pavilions. There we go. I knew I was going to say that wrong. I was looking at it, I was like, oh, there's no way I'm going to get it right. And each housing twenty patient uh, patients for uh, treatments of early cases. That is until August 31st, 1912. All tuberculosis patients from the city hospital were relocated to temporary quarters in tents on the ground of Waverly Hills pending the completion of a hospital for advanced cases. And due to the consistent need for... everyone, you have a lung disease, but we're just going to put you outside. (laughs) Hey, they got tents. They they, they really... um... Even when they were inside, they would uh, they would wheel them out in their beds, even out in the cold ass fucking air, because that was a part of the treatment was the fresh air thing. So they were wheeling these motherfuckers out all times. It's funny seeing the pictures are all wrapped up in blankets and hospital beds, just breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe like your life depends on it. Cause it does. <laughs> I'm cold, so I don't care. You need to breathe. That means it's working. <laughs> Dude, they did intense ass shit. I was watching uh, things. They would purposely collapse people's, like, one of their lungs and shit like that. Oh, they would uh, inject them in their, like, chest cavity with fucking uh, air or whatever the fuck and collapse their lung, thinking that would help. Yeah. It was even, like, experimental shit. Wait, isn't that, like, <laughs> super painful? Probably, yeah. <laughs> and just for them to die anyway. <laughs> like, yeah. They're gonna die anyway. Might as well try it. <laughs> Might as well try it. Hey, wait, I got it. I know it'll work. Let's fucking blow up their lungs like a balloon and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what they were thinking. It's like we can't get air into they can't get air into their lungs. We'll get it in there for them. <laughs> we'll get it in there. Collapsing lungs left and right. <laughs> oh man. Bad doctors. <laughs> bad, bad, bad doctors during the white plague. Bad, bad consumption doctors. <laughs> bad. But due to a constant need for repairs on the wooden structure, they needed more a more durable structure as well as more beds so that people will not be turned away due to lack of space. Construction of a five-story building that could hold more than 400 patients began in March of 1924 
and the new building opened on October 17th, 1926. But after the introduction of streptomycin in 1943, the number of tubercu uh, tuberculosis cases gradually lowered until it was no longer needed for such a large hospital. And the remaining patients were sent to Hazelwood Sanatorium in Louisville. And Waverly Hills was closed in 1961. See, I thought this was about an insane asylum, not a hospital. <laughs> I thought, thought it was too. That going, I thought that, that going is that the difference between a sanatorium and a sanitarium? But like the the creepy shit to it. Like, did you already talk about the the little death tunnel? Oh, we we are getting into that right now. Oh, shit, my well, then we'll just cut what I just said. I, I think no, you can leave that I'm in there. Cut, I'm not cutting shit. There <laughs> is there is a. Um, I was saying that you might. I mean, that it, to me, that that's fucking worse than a fucking asylum because. How many fucking people dying in that bitch from a plague? Yeah. A plague's just as scary. Especially I think they did. Maybe it's somewhere in my notes. I, I can't be. A, oh, yeah. No. Okay. So, no. I There is a. Uh, we got some uh, mentally handicapped people with tuberculosis, too. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But it was just, that's a fucked up shit. <laughs> That's like the PG I, version of uh, Insane when, Asylum. When, all, when I did my research, all I did was uh, listen to Metallica. So <laughs> I just watched the first season of Wizards of Waze, Waverly you know, Place. You know that song, Welcome that. Home Sanitarium, where they steal the fucking intro from the band Yes? <laughs> allegedly, but yeah. Oh, no, they stole that intro. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Casey's like, allegedly. But uh, because like there was like a big ass plague, that's a big ass place. You know, hella bodies fucking die. I mean, that's fucking pretty scary itself. That's a lot of lost souls. Yeah. And so what Joseph I'm was sure talking you have about a number <laughs> somewhere in here. But, uh, fucking numbers. <laughs> what Joseph was talking about this uh, this tunnel is a passageway to transport bodies and supplies in and out of the sanatorium. It was built on the first floor with the uh, with the rest of the building. The corridor is five hundred feet long. To the bottom of the hill, and it has a set of stairs on one side, which the stairs, uh, which were the stairs used for workers. On the other side, there was a cart that moved up and down the staircase that transported supplies and other necessities. And since uh, antibiotics didn't exist at the time, the sanator- when the sanatorium was active, other forms of aid were used to treat TB. Like Joseph was saying earlier, we got heat lamps, fresh air positive talk and reassurance to help keep the patients alive. Dude, I, brought, this is the rate, I death that, rate of TB was you'll live. You'll live. It's like, I brought that. I can't so, breathe. You will. I you can do brought, this. I, I brought up like pretty much something similar during the fucking, um, during the, the mercy, the mercy Brown thing. The doctor's like, yeah, you just need the exercise. And like, so, <laughs> so essentially they took the patch Adams approach, but without the comedy, <laughs> they weren't even entertaining. They're just like, you're going to live. It's like, shut the fuck up. Be positive. <laughs> Stop you collapsing were, my lungs, asshole. You needed positive reinforcement. We gave you all that. You, you just didn't envision living. That's what your yeah. problem was. Did there. you put it on your vision board? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's your problem. All, all I keep seeing is how much pain you're in. And I'm tired of seeing the number 10. I'm just yeah. like, over this. Can we, can we break it down to a nine at <laughs> least today? <laughs> break it down to a nine. I brought you out in the freezing cold. I don't know what else you want. <laughs> yeah, all your vision board says is get out. I don't understand. <laughs> get out of what? <laughs> Jesus, you and your roommate, man. I collapsed his lung and He's bitching even more. I don't understand. <laughs> Bunch of ungrateful assholes. We're adding a fourth floor next spring. I don't <laughs> or fifth or whatever it was. I don't even was, remember. Yeah, was, they turned it from a two to a five story. Uh, but <laughs> the rate of uh, the death rate of TB at the time was one death per day, basically. Goddamn. So they were just dropping like flies because they weren't positive. Well, and at the peak of the disease, the side of the dead were being carried away in full view of the other patients, which also lowered their morale. <laughs> and then, therefore, the sanatorium tried uh, transporting the bodies secretly as possible to increase the morale of the patients and lower the death rates using the tunnel. <laughs> Yes, and uh, the doctors and workers of the time also believed this is what uh, would help lower the disease spreading rate as well. Do you think if they had like a lot of people die in one day, they'd be running out of that tunnel like the beginning of a football game? <laughs> <laughs> did they make, what did they make it of like, like a McDermott? Like a fucking, and 
there was like a list of different names they all fucking called the tunnel. Yeah, the tunnel was known as the body shoot or the death tunnel by the locals <laughs> and paranormal <laughs> <laughs> investigators visiting the sanatorium. Oh it's, it's body down shoot. the body shoot. <laughs> okay, so was this like just a like an actual shoot that they put bodies down and went into like a bin? No, they they rolled like them out and ca- they rolled them out and it was a 500 foot tunnel that they rolled these motherfucking okay. dead bodies okay, out of the carts. Because yeah. when you called it the body shoot, it's like, wait, are they pitching these motherfuckers down to shoot out a window? It's like a laundry <laughs> shoot. I was watching. Uh, yeah. I was watching videos of people walking down the tunnels and shit, or like, well, there was narration going on. This just showing like tourists going up and down. So I was like, that's kind of cool. I'd be afraid yes. to go down there, but yes. Yeah. It, it, it was also a, uh, that tunnel was also a temporary air raid shelter, uh, shelter during uh world war two as well. That makes sense. Just a little fun fact to throw out there. Don't anybody cough on me. <laughs> <laughs> paranoid. Someone's going to bring it back. I know I've got my shot. I'm going to fuck. <laughs> But this, uh, the building. Okay, so then, hold on one sec. I did. Oh, okay. So after, because I told you that was just a little. That was a little background on the tunnel. But as I told you, like the building closed in what year was that? Nineteen sixty one. And then so it uh, the building reopened in nineteen sixty two as Woodhaven Geriatric Center. A nursing home, primarily. Dude, Woodhaven tre- sounds like even worse. That sounds more <laughs> spooky. It was uh, primarily uh, treating aging patients with various stages of dementia and mobility limits, as well as the severely mentally handicapped. Oh, so and uh, camp. <laughs> yeah. So the the way that they were treating these people were electroshock therapy was one of the most popular ones because it was highly effective in those days and widely used for a variety of ailments. And uh, would have would have it ah would haven failed greatly because it was severely understaffed and overcrowded, and it had also tons of reports of patient neglect, and ended up being closed by the state of Kentucky in 1982. See that 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 sounds more like the the Waverly Hills Sanatorium thing that I know. So when did it uh when did it get uh bought by uh Charles Xavier and get turned into the Institute for Gifted Children? Well, we'll get to that after we talk about how it was uh turned into a prison. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh Simpsonville developer Jay Clifford Todd bought the hospital in 1983 a year after it was clo- Woodhaven was closed for the the low, low price of three million five thousand dollars, which is a shit ton of money back in that day, man. That's a <laughs> yeah, but that's a that's a big area, isn't it? Big fucking building. Yeah, it was all big a self sustaining land. land. Yeah. yeah. He and architect Milton Thompson wanted to convert it into a minimum security prison for the state, but the developers dropped the plan after neighbors protested, and then Todd and Thompson then uh, proposed converting the hospital into apartments. But they counted on Jefferson Fiscal Court to buy around 140 acres from them for $400,000, giving them money to start the project, but never went through. So then. It never became a prison? No. Oh. Unfortunately. Could have been added, added to the lore, man. I know. It would have been nice. Some prison riots, some murders, you know, some crazy motherfuckers in there, escapes, murders, some neighborhood people. Oh, it would have been lovely. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then in March, uh, years, but okay, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It'd be epic. In uh, March 1996, <laughs> Robert Albert Hash- Hashke bought Waverly Hills and the surrounding area. He wanted to create a uh, a thing called the Aber Hashke's Christ. And the Reamer Foundation, oh wait, Abercrusty Christ and the Reamer Foundation made plans to construct the world's tallest Jesus statue on site, along with arts and a worship center. The statue was inspired by the the Christ in uh, Rio. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say, damn, Rio de Janeiro is gonna be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> we need was, one here in America. The the statue was des- uh, designed by local sculptor Ed Hamilton and architect Jasper yeah. Word. It was actually just a giant buddy Christ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. 
But the first phase of the development, coming in at a cost of $4 million, uh, the statue would have been 150 feet tall, 150 feet wide, and situated on the roof of the sanatorium. And the second phase would convert the old sanatorium into a chapel theater gift shop at another cost of eight more million. Build the statue first, then worry about everything else. Yeah. I feel like you should do the stuff that's going to bring in profit first. Yeah. You should have built the chapel and gift shop and told people you need money for your thing. And tell me Religious, they religious people love paid. throwing away their money to, to their uh, churches, so it wouldn't yeah, work out better. They could have charged people. Uh, they could have charged people to take pictures of the Jesus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, after but, they built all the other stuff, they haven't been making hell of money. But the plan to construct this religious icon fell through because donations of the project fell way short than uh, what they were expecting. In a year's period, only three thousand dollars was raised towards the project, <laughs> <laughs> despite oh, efforts God. to pull money from across the nation. And then it was ended up being canceled in nineteen ninety seven. I mean, at least they had a dream. <laughs> oh. I had a dream. Pretty, like, intense dream. The biggest Jesus statue in the world. They were, they, their whole project was projected to spend $12 million, and they only raised $3,000. It's, they, they shot for the stars. Yeah. They shot for the heavens. Trying to get that <laughs> Jesus up there. Shit's hella mm-hmm. funny. But now that's just a background on the whole, the whole place itself. Now we can get into their paranormal history. Oh, I just want to say when they opened up the fucking, um, when they fucking opened it up, uh, got a damn, ghost like sound. A tourist thing. I was fucking laughing because they had all this shit for like the tours and stuff, and they had one of those fucking. Um, one of those fortune telling machines up in there. The Zoltar? Like yeah, those fucking, whatever the, what is it called? The Zoltars? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Big, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking. <laughs> they had one in there. Like, what the fuck? Welcome. And they, they, they do the thing and they're just like, ooh, it's so spooky. What, what's my thing going to say? It's like, don't lick the doorknobs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, now I kind of want to. <laughs> Ancient TV <laughs> lurks among every corner. <laughs> Be right back. Should I keep going or should I wait for him? I think you're good to keep going. I don't think you'll care. All right. So in a 2001 newspaper story ahead of an on-site taping of the Fox's family's scariest places on Earth, a... Courier Journal reported that countless local legends about the place being haunted have fueled, had been fueled by a high number of people who are succumbed to uh, tuberculosis during the more than 50 years that it housed the patients. More than 6,000 people are believed to have died and or taken their life on their own. Do you have examples of these life takers? Yeah, once we get done with the paranormal oh. stuff. But, uh, this is the history into the why that people believe it's haunted. The infamous 600 foot body chute was used to discreetly move thousands of corporate uh, corpses through the facility has grown in infamy and often cited as where ghostly experience take place in a 2017 interview with the courier carrier courier journal. Tina Madeley said orbs and balls of lights are believed to have been seen in the shoot along with spirits. Room 502 is also notorious. The room in the rooftop chambers is believed to have housed, a tu- uh, housed tuberculosis patients with mental illnesses. Physicians often prescribed rest. Uh, we already said that, you know, they're, they're things, but other approaches were more. Uh, more brutal. In some cases, patients had their lungs surgically resected, partially removed, or collapsed in order to let the organ rest. What the uh, fuck does resected mean? I think it's like taking a piece out. <laughs> resected with an R? Yeah. Hold on. I gotta. I want to look that up because I'd, I've never heard that word. It says, it says uh, partially, because I put it in parentheses because I didn't know what it meant, so I put okay. partially removed. What the fuck? 
It's like these lungs don't work no more. <laughs> I'm gonna take them. It's like don't take I need them to breathe? <laughs> no, take man, them out. They're busted. Take them out, burn it up, and let their nearest loved one drink it. We're trying to run a fucking house of science here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Mercy Brown. When uh, Amy Bruni and Adam Barry of Kindred Spirits first made their visit, they recalled being struck with a powerful desperation they felt in the nurse's wing when they returned in 2019 to try and resolve that energy, only to be met with something much more menacing. Dun dun dun. It was Dennis the Menace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the abandoned hospital gained notoriety as a popular ghost hunting spot for local teens and lovers of the paranormal, and it did not disappoint. Countless stories emerged of shadow people and ghostly children uh, cementing the building's sinister, a sinister reputation. In 2001, Charles and Tina madly purchased the property and began its restoration. Volunteers, volunteers soon had their own encounters to add to the uh, the growing lore of Waverly Hills. Many reported unexplained slamming doors, sightings of a mysterious man in white drifting through the corridors. Others had run-ins with Timmy, a spectral boy who roams the halls and <laughs> likes to play ball. Timmy! <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when the facilities opened, uh, officially opened for public tours, visitors continued to corroborate these experiences. There's a uh, little girl who's been seen running up and down the third floor solar room. I don't know the solar room. Yeah. The little boy who was spotted with the leather ball, the hearse that appears in the back of the building, dropping off coffins, a woman bleeding with bleeding wrists cried for help and others. But his visitors heard slamming doors, lights and windows. Uh, lights in the windows of, as if power was still running through the building. Strange sounds of eerie footsteps in empty rooms. I hope the leather ball wasn't like a little one you put in your mouth because there's something <laughs> more going on. <laughs> there was. Other legends tell of a man in a white coat seen walking through the kitchen and the smell of cooking food that sometimes wa uh, wafted through the room. A number of people have also reported footsteps in the room, doors swinging shut of their own, and the power uh, the, uh, on its own power and the smell of fresh baked bread in the air dun, dun, dun. so those are those are just little background things we'll get deep into them now so the, say, whoever was smelling bread was just having a stroke yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's if you smell toast that was like popcorn yeah that's what it's just like i think he, i think that's uh i think he thinks that's the same smell to the people I don't fucking know. What does baked bread smell like? I've never smelled fresh break, baked bread. Is, so, it, is it a comforting smell? It is. It's amazing. I've only smelled like, bread. Go, go, go to a bakery sometime. It's what like, a bakery smells like. It smells amazing. I don't think I've ever been in an actual bakery. Or go well, you've been to a buy place. some kind of stuff what, to make kind bread. Of what, a, what a pizza place kind of smells like. Ah, I guess those smell pretty good, actually. You know, without all the child vomit everywhere. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> so they say that the the fifth floor is home to the most of the paranormal activity. But uh, visitors uh, reported seeing children playing in room, apparitions of patients roaming the halls, shadowy figures passing doorways, and light coming in from the windows. Volunteers uh, working to restore the place have also experienced and have experienced being struck by unknown forces, objects being thrown at them or moved, doors slamming shut, and apparitions in the doors of the halls. And the fifth floor was a uh, home to the nurse's station, the linen room, the pantry, and two rooms, one of which was 502. And people say that room 502 in 1928, an unmarried whore nurse hung herself after finding out she was pregnant. And the you say whore nurse? <laughs> yeah, whore nurse. <laughs> Is that hold on? Did you actually just say that? Yeah, I said an it. unmarried whore nurse. <laughs> that's that's the only reason why I said it because she because she was unmarried, so she hung herself after she found out she was pregnant. <laughs> She's a whore of a nurse. She was. Yeah, I didn't know she was a whore. She was masturbating aggressively as she was hanging herself. It was the first. <laughs> you know, like, picture David Carradine, but you know more spooky, more death around. <laughs> 
1932, another nurse is said to have jumped out of the window of room 502 and fallen several stories to her death. Others, <laughs> <laughs> others say that she was pushed. Mm. Visitors have seen shapes in, uh, moving in front of the windows, seen lights on the from the room from the outside, and heard disembodied voices around them. See, I think that person who jumped from the room just made eye contact with a really creepy boy that has 666 on his head. <laughs> or 616. Let's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, during a live Halloween special, Jason and Grant... Oh, I forgot which show this was. It's probably Ghost Hunters. <laughs> Fuck. I didn't write it down. Sorry, anyway. I can't, I can't take that shit seriously because of South Park. Yeah, but uh, Jason and Grant captured a video of a ball that appeared to move on its own and roll approximately 16 feet across the floor. He told his friend, "All right, when I when I get into the cam when I get in the camera shot, wait a couple seconds and roll a ball real slowly." It's all lit, Kobe. <laughs> you see the Walmart sticker on the side of it. <laughs> the ghost asked for rejected. Got, got it on that. Got there. that ball on rollback, motherfuckers. Just fucking punch yeah. the bitch. Always good. Always low prices. Man, I didn't write down what show these people were from. Fuck it. Steven Tango caught an EVP it of a distant tasters. growl in the nurse's ward. Jason and Grant caught three overlapping voices on a recorder saying things like, yeah, I see them. <laughs> Steven Tango and Brick caught EVPs of a light fem of light female moans inside the body shoot. Wait, what's a, um, what's are you sure EVP? those three overlapping voices wasn't just BC boys? <laughs> <laughs> um, what's an EVP? Is that a Jackie? <laughs> Is that a Jackulate vapor perimeter? Uh, if I can see if any ghosts have been masturbating in the uh, fucking radius. Did you say EVP? Yeah. Electronic voice phenomenon. Yeah. There's this movie called White Noise. It's a good fucking movie. It's uh, I've never a spooky watched. ghost. I don't remember <laughs> Ghostbusters, so I don't remember all the lingo. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. I only watched the the uh, the female version of that. That movie goes hard. <laughs> Just kidding. That wasn't a great movie. <laughs> Amy is said to have conversed with the spirit through knocking after strange sounds were heard in the nurse's ward. <laughs> strange raps. The sh a dark shadow figure referred to as the creeper has been seen crouching in corners when approached and will often stand up and scale the wall or ceiling. Oh, that, that, that could be the fuck out. <laughs> no, that, that doesn't make any sense. If you get close to a creeper, they explode. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would creep me the fuck out. If there's like a person crouching in a corner, standing up, that'd scare me. But if it crawls up the damn wall onto the ceiling, I'm going, fuck this exorcist bullshit. I'm out. <laughs> That's a, that's a every night in Orville. You just walk down where the yeah. tweakers are. They're all crawling on the walls like a little lizard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a couple of dollars? My family stuck without gas. <laughs> you know how many times I hear that fucking excuse from tweakers? <laughs> fucking. I'm like a you, fucking. You work at a gas station, of course you do. <laughs> I mean, like just back in Orville too. Like oh. you'd be walking, and they'd be walking with like a gas can, and be like the same people every fucking day. It's like I saw you here last week saying the same shit. Obviously, you didn't get very far. Did yeah. you eat? You, well, why don't you eat your family at this point? You solve your problem. <laughs> <laughs> you turn into know. a no problem. A Wendigo. Do yeah. you imagine being a fucking skeptic in those fucking tunnels? It's crawling on the fucking walls, dude. That's clearly just a black widow in the distance. That's a big ass black widow. <laughs> I don't know. We were in the fucking uh, spider's cave where the hobbits were going. It's like, that is obvious. The person It's wearing clothes. It's like, damn, that's a fancy ass black widow, Dan. <laughs> this is clearly a, a black widow from the south wearing fancy clothes because it must have came from a fancy family. I don't know. I tell you what. <laughs> Madam. <laughs> really the spider he comes out with a top hat. Madam. <laughs> there was another uh, full body shadow figure witnessed by Grant 
on the fourth floor when he tried to chase when he tried to chase it, the strange figure disappeared. Oh, it's never there. Why the <laughs> fuck would you chase a fucking figure? It's never I there. I it's a shadow. He was chasing a shadow the whole time and then finally hit where there was no light. It's like, damn, bastard got away from me. Couldn't confront it in time. <laughs> How are we going to get him back? They shine the flashlight in the other direction. There he is again. <laughs> <laughs> like a dog uh brit and adam uh saw the shadow figure hiding in the morgue as well but then uh jason and grant captured thermal imaging of disembodied legs possibly a child crossing a corridor on the second floor and that very same night steve also caught a similar thermal image of legs walking next to him Dan, Lieutenant Dan's going to be pissed as legs are still there. <laughs> <laughs> like, why just legs? That's, that's, that's so interesting. The guy has a foot fetish. <laughs> he, thing never, he never panned the camera up. He's just like, damn. He's like, God damn. Look at those feet. <laughs> Multiple apparitions, including child patients and doctors wearing lab coats, have been spotted throughout the property. And then one camera caught something flying across the ceiling of a hallway. The entity seemed to come out of the wall and disappear into another. That'd be some wild shit. Yeah, that'd be... Sounds like there's a lot of activity in this place. Well, that's, what about that's sexual cool. activity. Is there, uh, is there any reports of a couple going in there? Pulling around a little bit. Ghost comes up. Touches dude. Ghost comes. <laughs> Ghost, comes. <laughs> Ghost comes and just slightly rubs this his is, index this finger. This is all that's the like, hey. spooky ghost came by. <laughs> <laughs> the ectoplasm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that's all I got for the old Waverly Hills. Did you get the no. one with the... Or wait, was that Waverly? I might be mixing up with the other thing. The, that kid oh, the Stanley? Pushed... Or is that the Stanley thing? Uh, the little kid with the ball, you say something? I, th- I thought that the ghost was from a kid who was playing with his ball and fell down a fucking something. I don't know how the kid with the ball died. I don't, I don't know. I just there was about something the... about him falling down a fucking... I don't know why I want to say elevator shaft. I think I'm mixing it up with something else. I don't think, I don't think anybody stairs. died with an elevator yeah, shaft. I think, I think it could be a landing shoot. could be anything. I think the, it, it was something about a kid playing with a ball and then fell down something and died. Um, and then supposedly, and I, I, supposedly I heard a fucking, there was a person that died. Uh, there was a guy, I think a homeless guy and his dog were in there allegedly. And they were like staying the night and a group of teenagers came in and they were like fucking harassing the guy and they fucking threw him out the window or some fucking crazy shit. <laughs> Supposedly. That's I a little bit more that. than harassment. That's like yeah. murder. <laughs> there was an altercation and he was fucking tossed. Depends. Was it self-defense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was just uh, yelling fucking shit at these teenagers. I don't know if I can know. He was trying to... They caught him <laughs> giving, uh, having peanut butter and his dog and... I don't know, man. I'm too tired to you guys. Take, I gave you guys the utensils there. Yeah. You make the joke. <laughs> the joke is is made with the with what you just said. He was mostly mad because there was jelly involved, and dogs are allergic to je- uh, grapes, so you know it's poison to them. So he was kind of pissed that his dog was getting sick. <laughs> oh, I told you no jelly, dude. That's uh. No, in all seriousness, I I had heard about this quite a bit, quite a bit. I'd always heard, thought it was a ment- mental asylum or an insane asylum or whatever, which I guess it kind of was at one point, um, kind of. Um, For a short jaunt. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I didn't know anything about the tuberculosis or Jesus statue stuff. <laughs> yeah, that stuff was funny to me. Not the imagine, tuberculosis, but the Jesus ima- statue. Imagine the, imagine the different reputation this place would have if it was the Jesus statue instead. Yeah, being. there'd be a bunch of Catholic ghost raping little boys there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I no, didn't do it. Wild, though. Like, like, oh, I didn't do it. I have no doubt that this place is haunted. Shit. Enough has happened there. You know. Pretty sure a lot of Let me tell you, not like enough there. happened there. That's why I... <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Yeah, I, oh. I believe. I believe I can fly. Um, like that ghost did across that corridor. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something about the I, damn place, but I forgot what well, I was going to say. According to that song, he wasn't really focused on the ghost that was flying above. He was focused with, on the ghost with that ball because of the age, you know? <laughs> yeah, if it, I, I definitely would believe there was some like uh, like uh, some religious things at work because I believe they chased the kid with the ball down. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So they so every year they house a, like a haunted house at that place, and they do like ghost tours and shit throughout that. So I mean, if you're ever in the area, you could always go go walking about. Mike actually knows somebody who went there before. I don't know if he went to like that thing. I know I know he has been there. I'll, I'll no, I mean to the sanatorium itself. I don't know about it if he went on the, the ghost tours and stuff. I yeah, can't maybe. remember. He's supposed to be here in town on Wednesday. Um, it's funny they actually they actually use somebody who has tuberculosis when you're going on the haunted house and they cough on you. So <laughs> make sure you got your vaccinations. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring the unvax kids there. Uh, I forget what that fucking sketch comedy show is called on uh, fucking Netflix. But uh, the guy is at a fucking haunted house. One of the skits. I can't remember the thing, but then the the guy's like, this is now the adult tour. So you can we can do whatever we want and we can say whatever the hell we want. And everybody's all laughing. And then the guy's like horse cock. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> what were your thoughts on the, the old sanatorium? Um, I don't know. I mean, that would be spooky as fuck. I don't really know if uh, if I believe the ghost thing. I mean, maybe I'd have to go there, but also I'm too much of a pussy to go there, especially that death tunnel. <laughs> that would have to be one of those days that we bring Lord Calvert's back. <laughs> if we down some and be like, yeah, I think we can go down here. I think I'd still be scared. So I mean, I mean, maybe I, I, there's a there's a part somewhere deep in my brain that's like, dude, there's something creepy going on there. There's a lot of fucking dead people going in and out of that fucking place. Yeah, I, I believe in ghosts because, you know, as you guys know, I've had experiences my own. So I don't put it past this place to have a lot of paranormal stuff going on due to the amount of the tragic deaths that have gone on there. But it would be awesome if this pod started making more money then we could all go there, do our own investigation ourselves. But I 100% believe there's some paranormal shit going down there at Old Waverly Hill. 